one of the first personal area network is Bluetooth, which you are all familiar with. You have used Bluetooth. And um, so we are going to talk about two versions of Bluetooth, Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE in this module. First, we start with personal area network general introduction. And then we go into Aero 2.15, which is standardizing these things. Then we go into the Bluetooth, the standard stuff, packet formats, and um, energy management, protocol stack, etc., etc. And then we go into Bluetooth LE, which is Bluetooth low energy. And then, first of all, we describe why we need that. And then, you know, all same thing, Phi, Mac, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the coexistence. So, the issues in the design of personal area networks are slightly different. I mean, they are very similar to the other wireless networks that the energy is important, but energy is very important in the in the personal area network because in personal area networks, all the devices that are being used are battery powered, such as your cell phone, such as your headset, your keyboard, mice, whatever you have for Bluetooth will be battery powered. And so the battery life is the most important thing. And generally the battery life, if it is if it is few hours, people don't like it. If it is few days, maybe okay. But really they would like to have few years. Okay. And and we are not talking about a big battery, we are talking about a quiet cell. Very small cell, right? Because the devices are very small themselves. Second thing is dynamic topology. Basically, every device is turned off most of the time and turned on very little time. So whenever they turn on, we need to we need to make a connection. So the topology is not fixed. Unlike LAN, where you know your base station remains or access point remains one place and your computer mostly remains at one place, you walk a little bit here and there. But here, you, it's really you you are not really going to be at one place. So the topology is very dynamic. So and as a result of that, the third point, no infrastructure. So you really cannot have an access point which connects your headphone to your your iPhone, for example, or your phone. Because you might want to do this in the car, you might want to do it in the room, you might want to do it on the road. So really, you cannot have access points. Then interference. Now, because these devices are low powered, how do you live with the people who are you know, very high power, such as Wi-Fi stations next to you? So coexistence is important, right? Simple and extreme interoperability. And then, because unlike the RANs, where you might have few thousand people, or the LANs, where you might have few million people, but there are billions of devices for the PAN. The smaller the device, the cheaper the device, and more the number, right? So, how do you how do you ensure that they will work with each other? How do you ensure that you can buy a mice or, or a keyboard from anybody and then it will work with your computer? So that requires very very careful design of the you know and restriction on the protocols, and obviously low cost because people are not going to pay even five bucks, you know, for many many of these devices. So they really want to have you know very simple devices. So that's the challenge in designing W pens. And IEEE has plenty of them. And this is a big list, not because you have to remember all the list. It's because I just wanted to have a complete list, current list, so that we know where the world is. And if we need to, we obviously have to go back to this list to figure out um, what we need to read. So I started with 15.1. Um, actually, the 15.1 first version might have come out earlier, like 2002. This 2005 is the next, next version, which is Bluetooth 1.2. And um, and then um, continues from there. There's a 2 for coexistence, 3 for high rate, 3A was for ultra wideband, but it was disbanded, never happened. 3B for interoperability, 3C for another high rate, millimeter. And then there is a low rate, higher rate, and you know, I can go on the list actually. And for China, Japan, Mac enhancements, uh, RFIDs, smart utility networks, which is smart grid, uh, energy critical infrastructure, monitoring, TV, white spaces. So there is 14M, which uses white spaces. And then there is one for train, one for ultra low power, 4Q. 
mesh networking, wide area networking, body area networking is interesting. Basically, you could have your heart rate monitor talking to your phone. So how do you do that, right? So there is a, there is a standard for that. Visual line communications. And then there are lots of study groups. Study groups are not making any standards. They are studying. They are basically studying the issue. And once they have come up with some conclusions, then they will form a group to, to make a standard. So the study groups are there, R, S, A, U, and so on and so forth. And then there are something called interest groups, which are even before study groups. Interest groups are, you know, we are both in, we are all interested in some problem. We get together once in a while and then we decide if we get some in, something uh, interesting, then we can start a study group and a study groups becomes the proposal. Anyway, now another note thing you should notice is that the numbering system has a letter P and sometimes no letter P. So basically P means it is a still proposed draft, means in the sense that it is not finalized yet. So anytime you see a P, there won't be any year after that because it is still not final. So 15.4M 15, 15 is still in the development, in, in, it's actually 14M is almost done, but still it is P, okay? And then 15K, 15.4K, as you see, is year 2013. And so that is done and it has a particular year. So we don't have to put a P before the number 802. All right. So you understand the numbering system of IEEE. All right. So, so much work is going on in the wireless personal area network, right? So the first thing we'll talk about is Bluetooth, which is 15.1. Now, Bluetooth devices, I don't have to give an introduction. You have seen all of these things, headsets to audio to game controllers, to keyboards, to GPS. And printers, faxes, maybe you want to mute your um, microphones. Um, so anyway, if you can, please. All right. And then so printers, faxes, digital cameras. And um, the, the main thing is that they are very low speed you know, from the standards that we have talked about compared to what we have talked about. So they, they only go 10 meters and um, that is about 30 feet and, uh, and at 720 kilobits, so very low speed. And it competes with infrared. I don't know, I mean, you have seen infrared in the t TV remote for sure. Previously, we used to have infrared in the back of every computer. So you could talk to your printer using infrared and that used to cost five bucks. So that is a reference point. Basically, Bluetooth was designed so that we didn't have to do infrared. Infrared was line of sight. So you have to align two things very, you know, straight lines so that, you know, they could talk to each other. With Bluetooth, they said we will have radio waves. Infrared, you know, is light waves, right? So with Bluetooth, they said we will have radio waves and then we don't have to align anything. And um, so it's it's a very low rate um, thing, and uh, and it has this um, registered trademark, which is B, a letter B, written in a very stylistic manner, Bluetooth. Right. So what is Bluetooth? Well, Bluetooth is the name of the king. Bluetooth is the name of his Danish king. His real name was Harald Blattand, but um, he was very fond of blue berries. So all his pictures show a Bluetooth. All right, and it was obviously done and the, the, it invented in Denmark, I mean, the, the Bluetooth technology by Ericsson. And the Ericsson, they started in 1994 and Ericsson is in the telephone, in the phone business. So they wanted to have some way of transferring information from one phone to the other phone, you know, without connecting, basically short, short range radio connection. So they come up with this idea and then they contacted other companies and then the Bluetooth SIG was formed. SIG is in a special interest group in 1998. And, um, and then they make a, made a standard 1.0 in 1999. And then um, they said, okay, let's go to IEEE and get it, get it, you know, blessed. So IEEE 802.15.1 approved the first version. I think it was 1.1 in 2002 based upon the Bluetooth SIG. 
So the Bluetooth and IEEE were friends just like Wi-Fi and A2.2.11. The standard is done by IEEE and the interoperability is done by Wi-Fi association, right? So that went on just for one more version, 1.2, and after that, the two didn't like each other. And so they got apart. So now Bluetooth is no longer handled by IEEE. Um, but uh, so we will see that in, in the in the coming up rest of the lecture. But basically, the feature is that um, it takes very little current, 10 microamperes if it is not talking, just waiting to connect or whatever. So I mean, your phone is always basically you know on generally with with your Bluetooth on, and then you are spending 15 10 microsecond. But if you are using Bluetooth to talk to somebody, then it starts using milliamperes. And um, it's very cheap and very small. Okay, you can get very small chips that you can incorporate in your circuit. Now, Bluetooth, just like 802.15, has gone through many, many versions. Now, you, again, the list is there, and I don't think I can remember or you can remember all the different versions and what they did. I have put it here for the sake of completeness. Um, the important thing to notice is that first, uh, wave of things was to increase the rate. So they they said, oh, 752 megabit, maybe uh, sorry, 752 kilobits, maybe we should go higher. So they had enhanced data rate and uh, high speed and high speed all the way up to Bluetooth 3, and then suddenly they realized that they are going in the wrong direction. They realized that really speed is not important. What is important is the energy. And they realize that they are not really using the low energy that they really need. And there were other competing standards which came around which did better than Bluetooth on low energy side. So then the Bluetooth totally took a 180 degree turn and had a new standard called Bluetooth 4. This you have to remember. Bluetooth 4 has nothing to do with Bluetooth 1. Okay. It's a new standard. It's called Bluetooth LE, low energy. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let me see. Your question is, if it is a low energy, then it will not need the battery that much. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly the point. Yeah, yeah. So now the coin cells can last several years. Your current Bluetooth that you have in your mice or keyboard, that doesn't last for years. That lasts for months. Okay, and that also is not coin cell. You really use a AAA or AA battery. All right. And now, when we talk about Bluetooth low energy, as you will see in a minute, it can have a very tiny coin cell, just like you use in the hearing aids. Those things can last for years. And so think about this. I mean, basically, I, this is Bluetooth is probably not used for the heart rate monitoring. But if you were to do something in your body, body area network, you really don't want to change the battery every month. Right, particularly the devices inside your body. So, 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 so the, so the idea is, you know, the, the, so this is the kind of thing we are talking about. Very low energy. So the Phi is totally incompatible. Another name for Bluetooth LE is Bluetooth Smart. Okay, and um, and then there is, there were several amendments. One, two, three, four. And those were incorporated into something called Bluetooth 4.1. So that's the latest thing. Okay, so the key is to remember is that the Bluetooth first started as a low energy thing and went on to increase the speed. But in version 4, they took the direction that we really don't need the speed, etc. Forget the whole speed stuff. Let's just minimize the energy. So it's a new phi designed for low energy. So Bluetooth uses the same 2.4 gigahertz that we have seen so far, ISM band, complete frequency band. So Wi-Fi divided into channels which were 20 megahertz wide, remember, 1, 6, 11, and all that. But here, they don't have those kinds of channels. They use the whole band. They use the whole band, but what they do is they divide it into 2 megahertz Sorry, one megahertz channels 
and so they have 79 channels 79 megahertz band they have 79 channels okay and they just frequency hop so in this picture below what I have shown is two networks a blue network and a yellow network the blue network started on the top frequency first in the next time slot it goes to some other it just does a random number and goes to some other slot then it it actually needs to be in, in th for three slots in the same frequency and I will explain to you later on why it needs to be but once um, and then it needs to and draws another random number and goes to some other slot and so on and so forth so they keep drawing the random numbers and obviously the both sides the transmitter and the receiver have to use the same random number generator so they know where to listen and um, so they, they do that and then there is there could be other networks which have a different random number generator or different seed and they would be also hopping on the same frequency band but don't be interfering that much you know once in a while they will interfere but um, the chances are that they will they can stay uh, together and there could be third one fourth one fifteen fifth one so you could have lots of bluetooth connections going on at the same time and um, they might interfere a little bit but not much all right so here is a different philosophy here as opposed to OFDMA and OFDMA obviously is not a choice here at all because OFDMA requires FFT and you cannot get one dollar FFT like that okay we want a one dollar six circuit so basically what we need is a very simple technology where you just use one megahertz and a very simple thing but your one megahertz keeps changing I like the radio frequency hopping and what they do is they change every 625 microsecond the frequency so the each slot as shown here is 625 microsecond all right and they get 720 kilobits from 1 megahertz actually they get 1 megabits from 1 megahertz and um, but there are some times which are last you know in overhead so you get 720 for the user security is there in bluetooth but really you should be aware that bluetooth is 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 really unsafe you know last semester uh, we had a tutorial uh, not a tutorial we had a talk invited talk from somebody who has um, who is really expert in stealing your bluetooth data he could just walk behind you and get all your phone book and everything else and so on and so forth he just showed that in the in the lecture itself so so just be careful because the reason is even though the standard has all the security response authentication and encryption and all that but nobody uses it have you changed your bluetooth key no you haven't changed it and nobody changes it so they just take it default and if you leave it at default then it is very insecure somebody can put their phone next to your pocket and then they can read it they can read your phone so so the thing is security is there but not used by the users users just keep it simple and that's where insecure how far does it go well it depends upon the power if you have the standard class 3 you, your power is 0 dBm 0 dBm means 1 milliwatt with 1 milliwatt you can go 10 meters if you have class 2 you can go farther if you have class 1 you can go even farther up to 100 meters all right so anyway um, all of this is much less than what the LAN people use and we are already sub 4 watts for the regional area network <coughs> all right any question about these details um, I think main thing here to introduce is frequency hopping which we had done before and so um, you know there's nothing new here in, in some sense all right network so since um, basically there is no access point somebody has to become central access point so all the devices or most of the devices are capable of becoming a master and then they can talk to seven slaves and actually in this technology as you can see master and slaves is 1998 word now we don't use such words okay we call them primary and secondary but <laughs> but um, Bluetooth standard is dated and so you can see they call it master and slaves so each master has seven slaves and uh, basically so these slaves have a number one zero one two three I think maybe one through seven 
And um, so they have a three bit addressing for that reason. So basically when you want to send something, you know, you will, you will just say, well, I, I am number three and here is my packet. Or the master may say, number three, do you want to speak? And so that's another thing is that really slaves cannot speak until the master tells them to speak or master asks them to speak. So slaves keep quiet. When the master says, okay, do you want to talk? Okay, I, all right, so I will go ahead and talk. So that's how it works, masters and slaves. Slaves are polled by the master for transmission. By the way, seven slaves are the active slaves. You could have 255 slaves and that you will have a seven bit number. Actually, 255 is eight bit number. But uh, most of them will be sleeping anyway. So, um, the park distribution can join in two milliseconds. So basically, the park distributions are saying that, okay, I, I, you know, I'm here, I'm a keyboard, I'm a mouse, but I'm sleeping right now. Nobody's moving, nobody's touching me. So you could be parked. And the moment somebody touches you, you or your thing moves, then you become active. Other stations can join in more time. So joining takes a little bit more time. So parking is better than, you know, than sleep and totally is turning off. Then there is a concept of a scatter net, which means that um, you could be part of two Pico nets. So as shown here on the right side, there is this uh, another wallet device, which is part of two Pico nets. Um, it is designed in the standard, but really not really not described very well. So ideally what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have your own time frame and you, you need to synchronize with your, with your own slaves and you need to synchronize with other network as well. However, all of this is not defined very well. So nobody uses scatter nets. Okay, the concept is there, but basically PicoNet is good enough and nobody really has seven slaves. Most of the communication is just between one master and one slave. It's just between your headset and your phone, or your phone and, um, I mean, your mouse and your computer. Maybe the computer may have two slaves, a keyboard and a mouse. That's it. You know, so, so, so any device basically can become a master and obviously some devices would be so simple that they would rather not be master, like mice probably would let, let the laptop become the master because it knows that the laptop might have more slaves and I don't need any slaves. I mean, the keyboard doesn't need the slaves. So, so like that, basically anybody can become a master. So anybody can, you know, so basically master plays the role of what we call access point. Similarly, when you have a headset, and a cell phone, you can guess who will become the master and who will become the slave. And so all of this is actually very well designed in the standard, as you will see it coming up later on. It's not a question of somebody flipping a coin and saying, oh, I want to become a master. When there is a connection, they know what the connection is for. And in that connection, who will become the master? Okay. So when you have a headset, you know that the connection is for connecting your ears to your phone or your mouth to your phone, whatever. And um, and so the phone is in charge. Okay. All right. So you know PicoNet. Now frequency hopping we already talked about, except that I didn't in detail tell you how, what happens. So here we see three frequencies. The master is on the basically says something. And only after the master says something, the slaves can say something else. So master might say, Okay, here it is, and we are starting a new frame, slave number one, do you want to talk about something? And the slave number one says, okay, all right, I want to start talk about three sentences. So I need three slots, or I need five slots. So the slaves can talk one, three, or five slots. And um, and uh, the, the reason one, three, and five is because the, the slots are either even or odd. Masters speak only in the even, and the slaves speak only in the odd. And if so, if the master wants to speak two, sorry, the slave wants to speak two, actually master can also speak one, three and whatever number. But if the, if somebody wants to speak two, then one slot will go waste if you want to keep this odd even thing, you know, <coughs> fixed. So basically you speak odd number of slots. You speak either one, three or five. And um, so LSB of the clock indicates even or odd. So there's a clock cycle. So basically you have a counter. Clock means a counter 
which you increase every 625. Actually, you increase every half of 625. So you increase maybe every 312.5 microseconds. And so when the number becomes one, you know, this is, we are in the middle of the slot one and two is slot one, slot number three is slot two and so on and so forth. So you can just use that clock. And the LSB indicates whether it is even or odd. So in that case, the slot actually has to be, if, if it's just LSB, then the, then uh, unlike what I said, half, the clock does run at half this slot size, but um, I think the counter is kept at, um, 625 count. So basically, first slot will have number zero, the second one will have number one or something like that. Okay. So the least significant bit will indicate whether it is even or odd. So slots can transmit in one slot right after the receiving a packet from the master. And, um, and if you can speak one, three or five and, um, and the frequency hopping is skipped during a packet. When you are transmitting, you don't change your circuit. And that would be really bad if you have to ch change your circuit to another um, frequency right in the middle of the transmission. So, so that's why um, basically you speak and you end just before the slot end. So there is enough time for people to find the new frequency and get onto that frequency. Okay, but you don't change in the middle of the middle of the slots. Okay, so wherever you started, you keep that frequency, and everybody is listening on that frequency anyway. So everybody knows that um, okay, you are you are going to speak for five slots, and therefore you will end at this time. At that point, the master will come on, and then ask somebody else if you want to speak. <clears throat>